Marion, I love this show so much. Welcome to my spoiler review. Uh, Mandalorian episode, what are we at now? Seven, I think. Seven or eight. Good God, this was a good episode. This is how you do storytelling. All those episodes that everyone thought was filler. Oh no, it all comes together. It has all built to this. This crescendo, or at least what, what feels like a two-part crescendo anyway. Um, I really liked this episode. This was fantastic. This was really, 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 really good. So, let's get down to it, right? Um, let, in terms of, uh, like, cameos and things like that, and, like, fan service moments and, and all of this good stuff, it was, it was quite full of it. It was genuinely full of it. The mystery of the Yoda baby is still very, very, very big. Really, really still all there. But it would appear that now Mandalorian is becoming aware of what this is, what this child is. Um, and I'll say straight from the off, they seem to have confirmed that this is not a clone. They they seem to have confirmed that. Um, obviously, that may change because we don't know. Um, but the Ugnut, I think that's what they were called, um, the Ugnut character... Uh, said, yeah, no, this doesn't look to be um, grown or engineered. He said it seems to be highly evolved. So I think that rules out the fact that it's a Baby Yoda clone, um, which throws out even more mystery, quite frankly. Now, let's talk about the story, right? So what happens? It, we open in space, and the space shots in this show have been epic, um, and I've really liked them. This was no different, actually. It was a really, really good space shot. We open in space... And Mandalorian gets a transmission from Carl Weathers' character, the leader of the guild um, on Navarro. I don't know if he's if he's the head of the guild, but he seems to be head of the guild on Navarro at the very least, the Bounty Hunters Guild. And it says, basically, if you get in this transmission, Mando, you're alive, and obviously I'm alive. Uh, I've got a proposition for you. The city of Navarro, the planet on, you know, the planet Navarro with the city there where the bounty hunters were situated, has now been overrun and is under ex Imperial command. So, all of the uh, Empire, the stormtroopers, things like that. Uh, Werner Herzog's character, basically, has taken control of Navarro because obviously he's pissed that, you know, the, the asset Zebebe uh, has gone missing. So, the proposition is. From Carl Weathers to Mando, come to the city. We'll do. We'll pretend to do a trade for the baby, and then we'll kill the leader of the Empire of the Imperial troops, and then cut off. The, basically, the old phrase: cut off the head of the snake, and the body dies. That sort of thing. Or obviously, all the stormtroopers will bugger off then. So he heads back to our first kind of roundup because this is this is the whole story coming full circle. So we go to get uh, Cara Dune. So that made sense. That that part of the story made sense as to why uh, that was even shown in the first few episodes. We pick her up, the ex-shock trooper. We then go back to the planet where we found Baby Yoda. Uh, and we pick up the Ugnut character. Um, and also IG-11. Turns out IG-11 has been reprogrammed scrapped and reprogrammed which was kind of cool to be fair um good to see and there were some interesting kind of comments about how you know droids are neither good nor evil they just get imprinted upon um and i found that quite interesting really apparently they he built his own personality based off of the interaction with the ugnut i thought that was quite quite interesting quite cool uh and then they head over to navarro all a big team now i i keep saying ugnut i hope it's an ugnut now, they, they, head, they head off to Navarro. They meet Carl Weathers' character in the middle of the desert. And what I found interesting about this was Navarro seems to have, like, a lava plane, which looked really, really cool. So it was a good way to introduce a different planet aesthetic um, and also a different, different way to go with cinematography as well um, because the colour grading was very, very different whilst also still being on the same planet. So I liked that. I liked that they just said, well, you know, the planet, of course, it's not all just a desert. You know, why would a planet just all be desert? So I liked that. I thought that was a really, really good addition. Anyway, they meet up with Carl Weathers' character and uh, a bunch of bounty hunters. They obviously fear that they're probably going to be double-crossed. Uh, in, in the middle of the night, at a campfire, the 
what can only be described as dragons essentially come down. Uh, nothing to do with anyone. They're just wild creatures. And they pick off a few of the characters. No one important. Just scrap, you know, cannon fodder. And they also badly damage Carl Weathers' character. Now, in doing so, the baby Yoda tries to do what he was trying to do to Mando in episode uh, two, I think it was, or ep episode three, one of the one of the two, um, where he tries to heal him. And obviously, Cara June's like, can someone get this thing out of here? Because she's trying to help Carl Weathers' character. Because um, he's badly torn up, his arm's really bad, there's poison and things like that. And the Ugnut character says, no, wait. Wait. Uh, and he, he force heals him. So he heals him all up and he's done, and he's good. Uh, and then the next day, what could be presumed to be the next day, anyway, they're walking along. Uh, Carl Weathers' character is talking to the bounty hunters and pointing to his arm. So it would appear that he's about to be he's about to double cross the uh, Mandalorian, but he doesn't. It comes to a point where they're looking over the city, and Carl Weathers is like, "Right, well, I guess this is it." Then turns around, bang, kills uh, the two bounty hunters that were with him. It turns out obviously they were going to, but Carl Weathers, after last night, had a change of heart. Like, of course you would. Look at it, baby Yoda. It's, it's epic, epic cuteness. Um, and then the plan is much, much the same, basically. Well, the plan is the same as what he had told Mandalorian. Go in, use Mandalorian as bait, kill off uh, the leader of the Imperial Troopers, and then that'll be it. All good. All dandy. All fine and dandy. Uh, but apparently not, unfortunately. Now, the Ugnat character takes the baby, baby Yoda, the asset, and Mandalorian heads in with an empty pram, Cara Dune in tow, and Carl Weathers all handcuffed and things like that, ready to go. Pretending, anyway, to be handcuffed. Now, Werner Herzog's character gets killed at this moment. Um, they're sat doing a, a bit of a discussion about, um, you know, the, the, the crossover, getting libations for um, celebrating the, uh, the, the crossing of the narrative, the end of the joint narrative and all this kind of stuff. And he gets a phone call from, uh, I think his name's Esp Esposito. Or I, I can't remember the character's name, the actor's name, but basically the guy from Breaking Bad. And he's like, oh, you know, is everything good? Do you have the kid? He's like, yes, I've got the kid. And he's like, we well, might want to check again. And then he gets killed. Uh, so no more Werner Herzog. Shame, because he's an epic, epic actor in this. Really, really imposing. Shame we're not going to get him again. But it would appear Breaking Bad Dude is going to be even more imposing and even more uh, of a terrifying, looming authority in the background. Hopefully, anyway. But we'll get to that in a second. Now... Ugnut was informed to head back to the ship and turn on ground security protocols or something like that. And he's obviously heading back, he's racing back, um, but then hundreds of stormtroopers or a hundred stormtroopers appear out of nowhere after Mandalorian, Carl Weathers and etc. have shot up the place. And a TIE fighter comes down. And I, I think this is probably the first time we've seen a TIE fighter do this. I don't know, because I'm not hugely familiar with Star Wars, but as it landed the wings folded down, you know, which are vertical, folded down horizontally. I thought that was really, really cool. Don't know if we've ever seen that before. I can't put my finger on if we have, but epic to see a TIE fighter again. So, so good. I can't tell if they've built one or not, but it looked fantastic. Everything looks so good on this show. Uh, and who comes out? Breaking Bad Dude. And he's like, you, what you've, got, you've got something of mine, and what you've got is... Is far more uh, valuable than you could ever possibly imagine, or something along those lines. And obviously, Mandalorian is uh, concerned uh, that the baby Yoda has not made it back to the ship yet, so he's radioing Comsing over to the Ugnut. Um, and it turns out he's dead. Uh, some people, some stormtroopers that were in tow, have captured the baby Yoda, and that's basically where the episode ends. So we don't really learn too much, um, but it progresses and actually wraps up the last few stories really, really nicely. But they have moved this particular episode up by two days. Why? Because tonight uh, is when people can start talking about Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. It would appear something in this episode is going to be coming back in the Rise of Skywalker. One can believe, one can think anyway. Um, because why would you move it up? Unless you want like a Rise of Skywalker day. Or a Star Wars day. Um, so I don't really know. I've not read any particular leaks or reviews that mentioned anything to do with it 
anything from the Mandalorian in The Rise of Skywalker. I myself am watching uh, The Rise of Skywalker at midnight tonight. Uh, my Both my spoiler review and non-spoiler review will be out the early hours of tomorrow morning. Because um, I'll get home probably about four, I think. Uh, and I'll just crack on and do I'll just do my reviews then. Um, but I really like this episode. It's really, really nice. From a narrative perspective, it just wraps it up really, really nicely. So all those episodes that people thought were filler, all those little comments here and there about, you know, this, that, and blah, 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 and it being a bit boring, it just all came together really, really nicely. And I think anyone that thought those episodes were boring would probably look at this and go, oh, that's nice. I like that. That's cool. It wraps it up. Um, it just comes full circle. And the mystery of the Baby Yoda continues, which, I again, I really, really like. So anyway, if you've seen this, please do let me know. Were you even aware that this has been moved up? Again, let me know down below in the comments. If you are new here, make sure you do hit subscribe. You can step today on the world of pop culture and movie news by hitting the bell notification icon. Anyway, and as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I have a Mr. H. Take care.